How's it going guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle and today we're going to be talking about Refrigerator Full of Heads, uh, issue number one. This is from DC Black Label and is from Hill House Comics, which is Joe Hill's imprint. Um, this is a sequel to Basket Full of Heads. So we have Basket Full of Heads, now we have Refrigerator Full of Heads, and I have just off camera the original story basket full of heads here. I have that that hardcover that came out and the little axe that's there. The axe they do keep around and this time there's a another added thing with these uh, shark teeth by the H. Let's go ahead and pull the cover in a little closer so you guys can have a better look at it. Uh, there's the the logos up there. There's the shark teeth and there's the axe so you know a little change in the logo this time around and there you have the the head in the refrigerator so instead of refrigerator it's a basket and there's our old friend the axe and yeah I guess for those of you who noticed uh, this comics the ink on the cover is not great and my thumb did pull some of it off as I was reading it so that's what that white mark is um, I I wish comics would stop doing that you know we have to, I'm not gonna wear gloves when I'm reading my comic right but yeah the uh, the ink on here is not the the best um, but anyway, uh, issue number one for $3.99, recommended ages 17 plus. Anyway, uh, first let's uh, go ahead and credit where credit is due. Let's flip to the credit page and talk about the new team, which is actually at the very end of this book. And I have to fold it so you guys don't see the twist ending. But uh, Refrigerator Full of Heads, written by uh, Rio Yours and drawn by Tom Flower. Now, note how, like, this is very reminiscent of the art that you'd see in the original basket full of heads. So, it's a refrigerator instead of the basket. So, they are really trying to mimic the original's art style. Uh, you can see the credits at the bottom. The original basket full of heads was Joe Hill and Leo Max, and this was curated by Joe Hill. So, um... It's a different team, but they are trying to mimic the style of the old one, so that that was appreciated there. Um, let's go ahead and talk a bit about this new story. Now, I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers, but I do want to say my piece on a few plot points and make sure you guys have a basic understanding as to what the uh, story is about. So I'll cover setup, but not payoff. And being an issue one, there's a little more setup than usual, so I will go a little farther than usual. But I'll leave the fun climax. I'll leave that out. I'll leave that fresh for you guys. Anyway, we open up. Oh, before we get in. Blade Runner cartoon ad. That looks cool. <laughs> anyway, into the story now. Uh, before, so this is a past segment. And this is Lauren Valley, California. So this is not Brody Island. And we see the thieves waking up this guy in 1983 so just like a year or two before this story takes place and these thieves uh, they want something from this guy's collection of Norse artifacts and that leads to this comics new weapon it's this dagger uh, dagger and then a bunch of words in Norse um, <laughs> the dagger of thin rear um, anyway uh, it's a dagger that if they stab you with it, like they're going to stab its owner, uh, it will leave you alive but paralyzed. You'll be able to move your eyes and maybe your hands a little bit, but you're for the most part paralyzed if you get killed with this dagger. Um, so a little twist on the basket full of heads axe, and it is cool to see that there are more weapons in this universe. A uh, slight error here where uh, the difference between the story and what's going on in the art uh, the lady here uh, who is stealing it says that she doesn't believe in the dagger's powers while it's obviously glowing. So kind of weird to have her insult the dagger while it's literally there glowing. But I think that was one of the things that, you know, it got to be more extrapolated in the art than in the, uh, than, uh, the script initially wanted. But anyway, those people all die in a pretty good and gory scene right there. There's actually a, a cool head explosion on the, the previous page, um, but I don't want to, you know, just show you everything. 
Uh, but anyway, the police get there, and the guy who is about to die, he uh, scrawled a symbol in the floor, and they have to kind of figure out, okay, what's this symbol mean? What's going on? Who are these thieves? And what is the, the new weapon? So that's kind of your, your setup. And then we jump to uh, now in 1984, so like a year or so later. And now we're actually on Brody Island, and we get to meet our uh, new main characters. You know, a, a husband and wife, uh, and the wife is a novelist trying to finish her new book. And the husband is a fun jokester character who uh, seems to be a stay-at-home husband. Um, now they go to this cabin, and they're planning on staying on Brody Island for a couple of weeks as a vacation. So they're out of towners with no ties to anything that's about to be going on. The guy shows them around the place and we get a little bit of exposition where he talks about the beaches are closed because of a shark. You know, I thought it was, you know, like Brody Island, right? Like Chief Brody from Jaws, you know? I noticed that during Basketful of Heads, but here it's a little more obvious because we have a freaking shark showing up. We get a little bit of talking about um, Basketful of Heads and how that one wrapped up. Um, I'll gloss past that in case you guys haven't read it. And then they talk about this semi-rough-and-tumble bar on the outskirts of town, you know, and the owner leaves them with the keys to the cabin. So he says, hey, don't go to the rough-and-tumble bar. So that's, of course, the very first place they visit. The husband and wife separate for a minute, and the guy starts, for whatever reason, writing down license plate numbers to all the bikes outside of this biker bar, which of course gets them mad and the uh, bikers start to chase them. Now this is one of those things, you know, like the comic this time around is a little weird and not as concise, you know, like the first one, One Dark Night Storm, Axe leads to mystery. Here we're getting like random bikers chasing this guy around and it's one of those like out of nowhere aggression just for a big chase scene you know it's like why why was he doing that and why are the bikers so angry I don't know it's kind of implied that it's more of a rough and tumble place uh, but anyway they chase him and he has to jump off a cliff or uh, well not that high a cliff but he lands safely in the water but while he's underwater he notices a mysterious red glow and goes, hey, there's something under there. What's this under the water? So the cabin does come with a boat and they proceed to go out and pull the axe out from under the water. Really reminds me of something like The Mask, you know, where it's like a new owner going to get it, especially, you know, throwing it in the water, you know, The Mask, the Jumanji board game, you know, stuff like that. And I do like, there's poor Puzo there. He's rotting away, but but still living, gee. Uh, but anyway, I don't want to go any farther in the comic than that. Like I said, I went a little farther because this was issue one, and, you know, so much of it is set up. Um, overall, you know, it's not as straightforward as Basketful of Heads. Basketful of Heads was one night, rainstorm, solve the mystery, which is really cool and I really liked it. Here it seems to be setting up for something bigger and probably more meandering, and I don't know if it'll have that tight, clean feel that the first one did, but it still feels pretty fun, you know, so I, I, I like it, just not as good as the first one. Uh, the new leads do seem fine. I, I'll need a few issues to kind of get to know them, though, but they do seem to have pretty distinct personalities, and both of them do seem to be likable. You know, I like that they're kind of the odd couple where she's more serious and professional and he's kind of a goofball. And I do want to see, you know, like, uh, this is the first issue, you know, I do want to see, like, how many heads are we going to stuff in that refrigerator? Because if you read the first issue, you know what the, uh, if you read the first uh, story, you know what that axe does. Now, I'm kind of curious uh, if newcomers will just be totally confused or if you can just roll with the mystery. I'd say I definitely recommend reading Basketful of Heads, uh, but if you want to jump straight into Refrigerator, as long as you're good with kind of rolling with weird twists, I think you might be fine, but I would definitely recommend Basketful of Heads. It's a fun, weird little comic. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's my review for issue one. I'll probably be covering these uh, month by month after they come out. 
It seems pretty cool. Not as cool as Basket, but maybe. Uh, who knows where we're going, but it does seem interesting. Uh, but anyway, that is basket full of heads. I'll see you guys again uh, very soon. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll put a relevant playlist at the bottom. If you want to see more reviews, me covering more horror comics, those will probably be there. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.